period three elements, atomic radius. Atomic radius decreases across the period because shielding effect is generally the same as each of the element has two fully filled inner electron shells that provide shielding. Increase in the number of protons leads to increase in nuclear charge. So with nuclear charge increase, shooting effect generally the same. ENC increases across the period. So the attraction force on the electron cloud is stronger when you move across the period and the atomic radius smaller. Ionic radius. For ionic radius, we will be comparing Na plus to Si4 plus. For all of them, they have exactly the same electronic configuration because they have the same electronic configuration, shooting effect is the same. It will be incorrect for you to say it's generally the same. And from there, we can conclude to say that uh, the net charge of Si4 plus is higher than Na plus, or we can say that the uh, across the period, uh, the ions has got greater number of protons compared to electrons, or we can mention that the uh, Si4 plus has more protons than Na plus, basically pointing all towards the fact that ENC or effective nuclear charge is higher. Attraction force on this electron cloud will be stronger, and therefore ionic radius will decrease from Na plus to Si4 plus. Next, we look at the anion from P3 minus to Cl minus. Uh, and all these anions have exactly the same electronic configuration. So shooting effect is the same. And uh, in this case, so Cl minus will have a larger number of proton or fewer number of electrons as compared to proton. And therefore, because of that, the effective nuclear charge will actually increase, which means that Cl minus will have the smallest ionic radius relative to P3 minus. Melting point. For melting point, in terms of the first three elements, they're all metallic. And we know that the uh, Al could delocalize up to a maximum of three electrons forming Al3 plus. So A aluminum would have the highest melting point, which means across the period, the, the metallic bond is stronger and melting point is higher. Silicon. Silicon has the highest melting point because it's giant molecular lattice structure and the atoms are held by very strong covalent bonds. Then lastly, for the last four elements, they're all simple covalent molecules and are all non-polar. So essentially S8, S8 would have the largest electron cloud and therefore the highest melting point, followed by P4, Cl2, and then argon. Electrical conductivity. In terms of electrical conductivity, conductivity will increase from sodium all the way up to aluminum because aluminum can delocalize up to three electrons and silicon is a semiconductor, so the electronegativity will drop below that of sodium and magnesium and aluminum. Uh, so its electrical conductivity will be lower than that of sodium, ma sodium, magnesium, and aluminum. From phosphorus to argon, all of them do not have any delocalized electrons or mobile ions, and therefore because of that, they are electric the electrical conductivity uh, is near to zero. As far as the first ionization energy trend go, generally the first ion increases across the period because shooting effect is the same. And uh, you have uh, more protons, so therefore increase the nuclear charge and your size becomes smaller. So with a smaller size, more protons to attract the electron cloud, uh, the ENC actually increases across the period, which means your first IE increases across the period. However, there's actually two exceptions. The first exception occurs when you compare group 13 to group two. So in the case of magnesium to aluminum, there's a slight dip in terms of first IE. And the reason is explained by the fact that the electrons to be removed from aluminum is from the 3P subshell, which is actually of a higher energy level. 3P is of a higher energy level than your 3S subshell. So less energy is required to remove it. The second exception occurs when you're comparing group 15 to group 16. So in this case, the first IE will drop from phosphorus to sulfur. And the reason is because of additional shielding effect offered by the 3 px orbital, which is fully filled. And since it's fully filled UX, the electrons will have inter-electronic repulsion forces between each other as compared to your uh, phosphorus, which actually, which, which all its electrons in P orbitals are singly occupied. So the electronegativity will follow the same uh, uh, reasoning as your first ionization energy. Reaction with oxygen. For reaction with oxygen, in the case of sodium, it burns in a brilliant yellow flame, reacts vigorously to produce a white solid, sodium oxide. Oxygen with magnesium burns in a brilliant white flame, vigorous reaction again, producing a uh, white solid magnesium oxide. Aluminium will react very uh, less vigorous because aluminium is protected by an inner impermeable aluminium oxide layer. Nonetheless, if aluminum gets to react with oxygen, you still produce white solid. Silicon does not easily burn in the presence of oxygen because silicon 
is giant molecular lattice structure held by very strong covalent bonds. Phosphorus re, uh, burns in oxygen to form a blue flame, readily form a white solid, which is actually a P4O10. S8 also burns with uh, oxygen to form blue flame, uh, form a colorless gas, specifically sulfur dioxide. The rest of it uh, doesn't really react with oxygen. Uh, reaction with chlorine, uh, sodium reacts with chlorine to form your white solid, and the Cl, magnesium reacts with chlorine to form your white solid, magnesium chloride, uh, while aluminum reacts with chlorine to form a white solid. In this case, it's your AlCl3 dimerize to form Al2Cl6. Uh, if you can remember, there are two dative bonds that hold the two molecules together. Uh, silicon reacts with chlorine to form a silicon chloride, which is a volatile colorless liquid. Uh, and your P4 reacts with a colorless liquid, a PCL3, which can further oxidize uh, by chlorine to form a PCL5, which is actually a yellow solid. Reaction with water, sodium reacts with water, bounce around the surface, since uh, sodium is less dense than water molecules. Occasionally, you get some yellow flame, and it skips on the water surface. Uh, and vigorous reactions, lots of effervescence, because lots of heat energy is released. Magnesium reacts with your water, and uh, magnesium just sinks into the water reactions. It's non vigorous, and uh, occasionally you see bubbles being observed. And minimum oxide does not react with water, same as your silicon, uh, same as your phosphorus and your sulfur. And your chlorine does react with your water molecules, undergo disproportionation with the reactions as indicated below. Uh, finally, if the element dissolves in water, we're looking at the pH solutions of 12 to 13, that's your sodium hydroxide going on to uh, slightly above seven because magnesium hydroxide is alkaline. For those that doesn't dissolve in water, pH remains at seven, and chlorine that dissolves actually in water will form your HCl and your HOCl, uh, both of it are acidic, so the pH will drop to three to four. Finally, to recap some of the reactions that dissolve in water, these are actually the reactions that you would have learned back in your O-level. A bit on the atomic science based on the data book value, you'll find that for the case of organ, the atomic radius is much higher, and actually the axis is not appropriate, but rather that the atomic radius, it should be the radius of the various elements found in the data booklet. Uh, and we just want to highlight to say that why the argon's uh, atomic radius is much higher is because it's a van der Waals radius. So van der Waals radius is actually the distance between the two nuclei uh, divided by two, which means that in between them, there are actually empty spaces. Uh, for a quick information, argon, uh, it is not possible to actually solidify argon. So, uh, so not possible for one to determine the electron cloud size of argon. And if you were to sketch the uh, atomic radius of the rest of the elements, uh, this is it. And if you were to sketch the ionic radius on it, this will be the graphs that you'll get. And it's also important to point out that the data provided in the data booklet uh, only provides the cationic radius of SI4+. plus. Certainly, uh, in the case of silicon, it can form SI4- minus, uh, since it's a semi-conductor. In the case of the melting point, you will actually observe sodium going up to aluminum, which is a crease. Silicon is, in fact, the highest since it has giant molecular lattice structure. And then you will sink back down to your P4. Remember, there's a bump up because your acid has significantly more electrons than the rest of the non-polar simple covalent molecules. In terms of electrical conductivity, there will be a bump up in terms of the electrical conductivity to aluminum having the highest electrical conductivity since you can delocalize up to a maximum of three electrons then it will actually drop down significantly uh, to silicon, which is a semiconductor. So, it, and it's, it's important to note that the electrical conductivity has to be lower than that of all the metals. Uh, and then after that, uh, it will decrease all the way uh, up to argon. Uh, remember that uh, this is near zero. And if you were to sketch a line at zero, uh, that will not be correct as well. 